Hey guys, Mr. Money here. Just wanted to address something that, um, this is going to be a little bit hard for me to talk about, honestly. Uh, <laughs> I had a comment on my last video um, saying that I shouldn't be discouraged by big YouTubers. That uh, my content is more original um, and something that they enjoy saying, and that made me really happy. <laughs> um, that was really good to know, uh, that some small-timer like me with re really minimal pr production, a 720 camera, it's not in 1080i. I can't really do any better with the HD and the quality that I'm doing now. My lighting is terrible here. <laughs> um, I used to have an overhead light at my old apartment, but my bedroom doesn't have that anymore. Um, so it's a little bit harder for me to make good-looking videos nowadays, I guess. Um, even if they weren't really that good looking to begin with. Um, and he's right. You know, sometimes I do look at these uh, music review channels who have these really big numbers. And uh, they seem to grow really fast. And sometimes I think to myself, like, what am I doing wrong? Like, uh, I appreciate everybody who subscribes to me. I'm almost at the 800 subscriber mark again. So we'll be doing another Q&A, so tell your friends to sub! Um, but, like, the weird thing with me is it's been a very, very slow climb to the top or whatever like that. I have no idea why. I don't know what I'm doing wrong, necessarily. I know I don't talk about everything that comes out, and I know I seem to tend a little bit more to my own personal tastes, but I kind of started this thing as a way to express my love for... I guess the types of things that I was into, and of course I'm open to suggestions all the time. I had a great one on my last video. I might review the new Black Lips album. Um, I've really been enjoying the sound on that. Um, not trying to get off topic. It's hard for me to not talk about music. Um, but um, I just don't understand why I can't get anywhere on here. Um, it's probably just that. It's probably just because I don't talk about everything that comes out, but there's some things that I'm just simply not interested in. I can't... Like, if I have nothing to say about something, it's hard for me to make a video about it. I mean, I could sit here and say how much I think it sounds generic, or how much I think uh, I don't really understand the hype or anything like that, but I don't want to offend people's tastes. I'm not here to say that all your music is shit just because I personally think it is, or something like that. Uh, I just don't want to offend anybody's music taste. And... I mean, I know reviews are a highly opinionated thing, but sometimes people, especially on the internet and YouTube's age, take it way too far. And um, I just don't want to push it to that edge, I guess. That's why the idea of me talking about albums that maybe not a whole lot of people have heard of is so appealing to me is because, um, well, there's a few reasons. Uh, <laughs> one of them is because I feel like introducing people to something new is a really cool, and of course, you guys do that to me. Um, some, I mean, that recommendations video I did a few uh, months ago introduced me to two artists that I listen to now, so that was pretty cool. Um, so that's why I like doing that most of all. That's the most exciting part for me, is doing these really hipster-type albums. Um, just because I think they're really good. The second reason kind of goes into that is because a whole lot of people say that today's music generation is a really terrible, terrible thing. People think, you know, that there's nothing to look forward to. Rock music is dead. This is dead. This certain genre is dead. And, you know, I have I used to believe that too. I used to believe that type of person that, you know, like, this is all we have here, you know. I used to be totally like, you know, like dad rock fucking, you know, old time stuff. I thought that the golden age of music was like a real thing. And I still love those bands. But I've come to realize all it takes is you just have to dig. You have to dig through the piles of crap nowadays to find the good stuff. Not to say there weren't piles of crap back in the old days. There were. There were plenty of things being played on pop radio stations back in the early days that we would still say the same thing, you know? I mean, it's just a, it's just a misconception that a whole lot of people have that I've learned to kind of, you know, back myself away from. I'm always changing my opinions on things. Like, I used to never listen to pop albums because of that whole stigma, stigma that I had against, you know, all pop artists being terrible. I don't think that anymore. Um, 
I don't. I mean, I enjoy Art Pop by Lady Gaga, for God's sake. I listen to that thing from time to time, honestly, ever since it came out last year. I still listen to a few cuts from that album. Um, but you see, like, beforehand, like, give it like three years ago, I would have never touched that album just because it simply had Lady Gaga's name on it. You know, I just don't think that way anymore. But it's still really depressing to me. It makes it hard for me to stay motivated to keep making videos when I see my numbers rising so, you know, slowly. I just don't understand why I don't appeal to as many people. I know it's also probably because I have a hard time, like, phrasing my words a whole lot. I'm sure you guys have noticed it, how I kind of jump over my words and say things that don't make sense a whole lot of the time. And that's because, you know, I go into these reviews and stuff like that totally unscripted. I go into this thing simply after listening to the album a few times and then just turning the camera on. You know, I'm not writing out anything for these reviews. Um, it's just off the top of my head what I think about these tracks. And that's why it sounds so, I guess, unorganized. But that's just the style that I'm going for here. Um, I'm not a music critic. I'm not the type that studies really hard into this shit, like the meaning behind the lyrics and all that stuff. I just range it by how much fun that I have with it. You know, I am very, like, bare bones with my reviews. I don't know if you can hear that siren. Whatever. <laughs> I'm just really, I'm just really on the surface type of reviewer. I don't delve into things that much. I just judge it by how much fun I have listening to it how much I enjoy singing along to it. Um, I'm just the type that likes to have fun. Period. <laughs> I mean, with movies, for some reason, that's a whole different story with me. But nonetheless, music is what I talk about most of the time. So, um, Somebody also suggested that I maybe try to talk about other topics, like video game reviews and stuff like that. Um, that would be cool, but sometimes I feel like I should start a totally separate channel for that, because... I've been doing music reviews for two or three years now, so would it be just jarring as hell if I just talked about this, like, Malaysian airliner thing going missing somewhere in the ocean? Or if I talked about what I felt like when the 2016 elections come up about Obama and stuff like that? Like, would people be interested in hearing that? Um, I just don't know if I need to change everything totally to try to attract more people to the channel. Of, um, because my views are so... With almost 800 people watching me, it feels like my views should also be a little bit higher. I just don't really understand why. why. I don't get it. Um, but still, this is nothing against anybody who's watching me now. I think every single one of you, especially the ones that I see pop up a whole lot in the comments... Um, I think it's great that you guys have stuck around for that long and cared about what I have to say and stuff like that. And um, I'm still going to be doing album reviews because I, I've been doing it for two years almost now, and it's going to be really hard for me to escape doing reviews. Um, whenever there's an album that I listen to and I really like it, it's going to be hard for me not to talk about it. So I can't change that about this channel. But if anything... If you guys want to see anything else, I would love to hear it. Um, I know that I'm slow on uploading videos, and I think everybody's kind of used to that now. It's just that, sadly, I have a whole other job I have to deal with five days a week. And when the weekends come around, sometimes I just like to relax after working. <laughs> I don't know. I would do vlogs, but honestly, my life isn't really that interesting. It's mostly just filled with work and coming back home again, and seeing Danielle. Um, like, the only time I ever do anything interesting is when me and Danielle go to the beach or we go to a concert. Um, you know, sometimes I look at all those big YouTubers, and I'm sure that everybody else who watches big YouTubers and stuff like that thinks this. They, they look upon these big YouTubers with envy. They look upon these big YouTubers as someone that they aspire to be. Um, because, like, they look at their life... You know, like, for example, Anthony from Smosh. He has a he has a channel with his girlfriend, uh, watches live and stuff, I believe the channel's called. And they went to Hawaii a few weeks ago. And then, like, you watch that, and then the video ends, and then you look around your 
your apartment or your mom's basement or some shit, and you're thinking to yourself, well, my life is just a big piece of shit compared to this big famous YouTuber's life. Like, why can't I have a job where all I do is make people laugh for a few hours, maybe upload a few videos a day or, or uh, per week or something, and then just watch the money come in? Like, I'm sure it goes a whole lot deeper than that, and I'm sure, especially Smosh, works really hard for what they do to push out all the content that they do for their, like, four, or five, six other channels on YouTube. But then you watch these vloggers who have very, very minimal production who are really big, and it's like, oh, these people haven't made. Like, once a day, they have to edit together a three-minute video, and then, you know, that's it. You know, 100,000-some views, the money rolls in, and they don't have to have a job. They're free to be with their friends and their family while continuing to make people laugh. Whereas me, <laughs> I, was, I might be stuck at the radio station on Christmas Eve, and I can't see my family, or I can't see my fiancé. And life is what you make it, but sometimes we're just not all dealt the same hand. And it's really, really depressing. I know that that's a really small percentage of people. I know the majority of people, well over the majority of people in this world, are stuck in the same situation that you and I are in watching this video right now. We're not internet famous. We will never be internet famous. And we're never going to live the carefree life that these big YouTubers seem to live. And it's really depressing. And I feel like YouTube is going to kind of cause people to, you know, I think that causes depression in some people watching these big YouTubers. I know it does for me. I, do, I feel envy every single time I watch a vlog like this with big YouTubers making vlogs. Um, <coughs> their only job is to make people laugh or entertain people for up to three to ten minutes either once a week or every day. And then after they edit their video and stick it up on YouTube, they're done. That's it. That's it. That's all they have to do. I mean, I don't know all the ins and outs of it. If it's harder than that, I would, I would love to know if it is or not. But from where I'm sitting, it doesn't seem that way. All they do is seem to be totally content with what they're doing and then we have to just watch them. I know they always say stuff like, I want you to come along on this journey with me. That's not what's happening. We're sitting in our pathetic fucking rolling chair watching the, the fucking screen. And we're thinking to ourselves, why can't I have a life like this? Why can't I do that? You know, I know, I know everybody watching these vloggers feels this way. Um, <laughs> I just know they do. I mean, people say it in the comment sections all the time. This fucking kid, I didn't even hear this guy, this Tyler Oakley guy. Um, he, he put up a video about things that he did in the year 2013. He put up this really long montage of all this stuff he did. I mean, like, he was working, making videos with huge YouTubers. He was hosting things with MTV. He went to New Orleans for the Super Bowl. People would die to live the life that these people live. The only thing, though, that might be bad, that a few YouTubers have actually brought up, people way smaller than them, but entirely bigger than me, who have been talking about, like, you know, like, if YouTube decides to change their policy, if they decide to go and change something up, you know, again, and they're not going to be making the same bankroll that they do, some of these YouTubers are going to be totally fucked. <laughs> That's the only good part that we have, is that we have the security. If people up and one day decide to just unsubscribe and not watch their channel, they're not going to be making the same amount that month as they did a few months ago. And that could be really damaging to them. People need to have a backup plan when they do YouTube, I feel like. Because if you don't, you could end up in a ditch somewhere. Um, I know The Amazing Atheist does this. The Amazing Atheist, his full-time job is YouTube, and he has absolutely no backup plan. That's why he uses that Patreon account that I created a few months ago, because, sadly, I was trying to get to a point in my life where I could also, you know, just do YouTube videos. I would put up so much more content if I didn't have a job. <laughs> but, you know, the long hours that I put in, it makes it a little difficult sometimes. Um... 
But in the end, you know, I realized after listening to people, that's wrong. Do not e-beg. Do not e-beg. You're already getting money off of your AdSense accounts. Do not beg your fans for more people. The Amazing Atheist, all he sees is dollar signs in his viewers. That's it. Period. I mean, he could say, and then he'll try to sell his book at the end of every episode. That's another thing, too. He just, he just wants and wants and wants and takes and takes and takes all he can. And people give it to him. People give it to him. It's frustrating. <laughs> it's frustrating, to say the least. So, to answer back to that comment, yeah. I do get discouraged a whole lot, and sometimes I feel like stopping YouTube altogether because of it, because I just do not understand what I'm doing wrong. And that's, that's really the biggest point of this video. I went on way too long on a huge rant with this. But, um, I, 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 I'm just telling you guys how I feel. I don't know what I'm doing wrong. But I'm just going to keep on doing what I'm doing, because, you know, I like how the videos turn out most of the time. I like how I kind of give my opinion with the visuals that I do and stuff like that. I'm probably not going to change that much, and I'm not going to stop doing YouTube. I tried that once before, and I came running back because I miss sharing my opinions, no matter how little of people watch them. Um, it's just fun for me, I guess, to actually be able to say something about an album that I'm loving. Um, so, you know, I'm not going to stop. I won't stop. Sometimes I feel like stopping, but it's going to be hard for me to, just because I enjoy doing this so much. But, um, yeah, just wanted to give my two cents out there. Um, I'm not really sure how to end this. I know it's really depressing. And if you stuck through all of this, congratulations. Um, <laughs> but, uh, I'll see you guys next time. Mr. Money1235, out.